Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. Let's take a quick look at the snowpack, the current state of affairs across the West right now. And these are snow water equivalent percentages of median. Um, so let's take a look at this. Pacific Northwest doing extremely well in a minimum 100% of medium in many places close to 300 percent northern california tahoe anywhere from 100 to 200 percent of median doing very good uh, we need more snow in the wasatch i can see some numbers there in the 70 percentiles a few in the 90s Ohio went as a mix of 70s 80s and 90s in colorado especially along the i-70 corridor in south looking very good 120 to 170 percent of norm um, northern new mexico Doing better than I thought you were doing. Looks like 90s to about 115, 120% of normal. Now, Wyoming definitely could use more snow. On the drier side, the storm track has largely been missing this area, although I think that's going to change, especially once we get into January and February. I think things, things definitely turn much more active for the Tetons. Idaho, you're actually looking pretty good. Parts of Montana could definitely use more snow. Okay, let me take you out to a live camera. Here's Colorado this morning, crystal clear. This is up on the Continental Divide, the Ptarmigan uh, lift up there, if you're familiar with Loveland. And temperatures are about 20 degrees. It's a crystal clear morning. I don't have any snow for Colorado until 12 8, 12 9, 12 10, somewhere right in that zone. That's our next storm system. And you can see it. On radar, the west is totally dry. It is bone dry, severe clear out to the west. Um, in the northeast, another little surge of some lake effect snow coming off of uh, both Erie and Ontario this morning. All pre-storm type of flow. There's a storm coming for 12-4, 12-5, almost like a clipper that will come racing down in. And there's another storm, at least one more behind that for the extended forecast. So let me give you the lay of the land. Across the west, this is water vapor satellite imagery. On this, your oranges and reds are gonna be your drier air aloft, your moisture is in the whites and the blues. And still looking at this ridge of high pressure right here. That is the dominant feature through 12.7. Everything else is being routed up and around this thing. I mean, there's a lot of moisture in the whites and the blues here in the mid levels, but it's all being routed up into Alaska and parts of BC and Canada up and around this area of high pressure, and then down into the Great Lakes. And that's where our next storm system here is going to come from, 12-4, 12-5. It'll race down through the Great Lakes and then hit the Northeast with snowfall. Now, eventually, all of this action, big, big trough back here, will start to break this high down, and it will send a storm system into the Inner Mountain, 12-8, um, 12-9, and 12-10. Okay, here are my bullet points this morning. So the northeast, your next storm system is 12-4, 12-5, followed by another one down the road. Out west, high pressure till 12-7, and then the first storm to break that down will be roughly 12-8, 12-9, somewhere in that time frame. Here are my uh, best odds of snow, snow timeline for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, you've got light snow coming 12-9 and light on 12-12. In Colorado, moderate to heavy 12-9, and light to moderate accumulations on 12-11 and 12-12. Potentially um, some heavy snow there for the Tetons, moderate on 12-8 and then moderate to heavy 12-11 and 12-12. And a pretty good stretch coming for interior BC, 12-6 and 12-7, with potentially late 12-6 into 12-7, heavy snow accumulations. So something to look forward to there. Here's the jet stream by close of business today. So really just looking at this arcing ridge of high pressure, pushing the jet way up into Canada, kind of a split flow right now with the southern and the northern branches. And it stays that way, 12-4, 12-5, 12-6. And then we start to see, here comes the trough out of the Pacific Northwest. You can see the dip in the jet. That is definitely a change in the pattern. That would help to bring some colder air down, support some snow production with a cold front. So that's 12-8 running through Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and eventually into Colorado, where it could spin up into a slightly stronger storm for Colorado and also southern, also northern New Mexico. And then potentially with that type of jet setup coming out of the northwest, we might be able to pull down another storm right on its heels. In fact, here's the forecast radar in the satellite. So this is by 5.30 this afternoon, high and dry for the low, lower 48, and it stays that way for most of the period. Um, I'm going to let this thing run. Many sunny days and lots of warm temps. And then eventually, here comes our storm system. There it is hitting the Pacific Northwest. Starts to push some 
early snow down through Idaho and Montana, BC. Um, some snow, obviously, late 12.6, 12.7, maybe even trickling into 12.8. And then all of that begins to make its move to the south. So this is 12.9 in the morning. Snow moving through the Wasatch, the Tetons, big sky moving into Colorado. And then the storm might actually strengthen. You can see some deeper blues moving through parts of Utah and also Colorado into northern New Mexico. That's 12.9 in the afternoon. Even on 12.10, there's some leftover snow as that moves through. And then look at it behind it. There's another storm system coming in on that northwest flow through 12.11 and 12.12. Okay, here are my numbers. So all of today through 12.7, it's all up to the north. It's all up at a BC, Canada, Pacific Northwest. Um, where we could see six, seven inches through Kicking Horse and Revelstoke, potentially eight or nine through Baker, Rainier, up to Whistler Blackcomb. Now, now we're back in the money right here. This is 12.8 through 12.12. The flow turns, we get that initial storm system on 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, and then potentially that flow out of the northwest behind it for 12.11 and 12.12. And we can crank out some decent numbers here in Colorado looking at potentially six to 12 inches of accumulation, pretty widespread through all the zones. Uh, four to eight across the Wasatch, a bit more for Brian Head, but looking at at least a foot if this holds for the Tetons and Big Sky looking good through Brundage, uh, parts of the interior uh, high country there through Idaho and the Northwest Montana. Um, some decent numbers up around Revelstoke down to uh, Stevens Pass, the high cascades and the volcanoes could see a foot of snow out of this during this time period. But notice what you don't see is much snow at all, if any, for the Sierra. So the pattern at this point really missing the Sierra off to the, uh, the north and the east. Now for the northeast, big snow accumulation here. Doesn't all come at one time. You've got a storm on 12-4, 12-5, so that'll contribute. Another potentially on 12-8, and then another one after that. So it's, it's almost like three storm systems lay down these grand totals. Uh, from today through 12-12, could be looking at one to two feet of accumulation. Uh, for, for parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, parts of New York State. Um, so we're looking good. I mean, you know, picking out a couple locations, Jay Peak almost at two feet, even more than Mount Washington in my forecast here. Snow Ridge, Whiteface, still trying to build the bases. Uh, but uh, decent numbers for this time period. Love seeing that. Um, so let me take you back to the big map. This is the period where we're in the money again. This is for the West. This is all of 12.8 through 12.12. And potentially during this time period, two different storm systems um, coming in across the west, and the final setup with that northwest flow could be quite good, especially across the Tetons and Idaho, parts of Colorado. We'll have to wait and see. The numbers for uh, the Wasatch, a little bit uncertain, obviously. We'll have to see exactly where that flow sets up. Is it close enough to generate orographic snow? Um, that's yet to be seen at this point. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here to this, uh, this mountain weather update. I appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.